then I might want to be submitting my application early. So let me give you what really happens. Very common question. So let me start uh, at the beginning. We're gonna get a little customized again. And there are, I gotta give you a little context because there are some differences of opinion in our community on this. But again, I'm speaking to you from the perspective of, of someone, of course, who's been in medical school admissions for 30 years. And, 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 and in essence, one of the things we've tried to do, for example, in sort of having joint conferences uh, with the National Association of Pre-Health uh, Advisors, which I'm sure Mr. Burke is part of, we tried to bridge the gap to make sure our pre-health advisors have this information too, because sometimes it's been misleading in what medical schools are actually doing. So let me speak with Georgetown because you laid out Georgetown with specificity. Georgetown does not have a rolling admissions context. And rolling admissions, I believe many people understand, but I just want to share it, is in essence, we are giving accept offers and filling the class all the way through and it's emphasized that that's happening, right? So it's not to say that we're not offering accept the offers uh, early in the fall and early, early spring, but there's still lots of opportunity. Uh, we interview through February, and after February, we're not interviewing anymore. So in that time frame, in a qualified context, yes, it is important to submit your application at a reasonable time. But now let me move in a little bit. Cookie cutter advising says you need to take that MCAT as early as possible. Take it in May, get your MCAT submitted in June because you want medical schools to see your information early. Because if you're seen early, then you have the greatest chance of being uh, extended an interview and potentially accepted. Now, as you know, with any myth, with any myth, there is some truth in that, <laughs> all right? There's some truth. There is truth that if David Taylor actually has outstanding academic credentials, so that's the grades, course grades, and standardized test scores, and I have to have outstanding service, leadership, clinical shadowing experiences, and what is outstanding, that's a secondary discussion, then I might want to be submitting my application early. So let me give you what really happens. The most competitive applications in the country. What do I mean by competitive? I didn't even have this. 4.0. Every time I see a transcript with all A's, I said, well, look at that. That was not David Taylor. All A's. Okay? All A's. And that's an undergraduate and in graduate school. They went to graduate school before medical school. We're talking about the academic style, what I call cognitives, grades, standards, test scores. And the MCAT has to be minimally in the 86th or higher percentile rank. Right now, if I recall correctly, with the new rankings from the MCAT that were just published, that's uh, a 512 or higher. All right? Now, you're going to see a lot of averages on people's websites that seem lower. I'm talking about the most competitive applications academically, okay? When you look at their service work, remember I talked about the deep dive service? Oh, they have deep dive service. They have hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours in deep dive, very focused areas. It's not all over the place. And they have hundreds of hours. They also understand this is the most competitive applicant. If I'm not interested in being a research um, physician, meaning I do research that then gets translated into medical intervention. That's an MD, PhD. They understand because they've gotten the advising, I do not need 300 hours of research. I do not need 200 hours of research. I don't even need 100 hours of research. If I have research exposure up to about maybe 40 hours, that's fine as a competency to understand basic science informs intervention. Okay, I'm laying the foundation for you. So they have great advising. Those applications come in in June, July, and August. Remember, 
86th percentile rank or higher in MCAT. It's a 512 or higher in MCAT. Only one attempt. Only one attempt on the MCAT. Deep dive 100 plus hours in dedicated service, leadership, and clinical shadowing experiences. And they understand where they are applying. In other words, they've done the research on educational philosophy, social mission of the school, and they're able to tie all that into their personal statement and their own career goals, professionally and personally. So this, it's a customized application. That's the most competitive. If I come in with a 3.2 science grade point average, by the way, that's not overall, that's science grade point average I'm giving you. That's not overall grade point average. That's science grade point average. Okay, so if I come in with anything less than a 4.0 in those couple of months, 3.5, I'm not really going to be considered yet. And depending on the medical school, this is what you don't know, depending on the medical school, we may come back to you later on, or you may just get a decline. But what you see in your admission screen, you see your applications under review. What you don't know is we've already declined you, and it says send letter. 45 days later or 60 days later, but you were declined within the first 10 minutes. You don't know that. The right information at the right time to make the right decision. So if I'm working with a valued student and they say, I want to get it in quote unquote early, get it in early, get it in early, I'm looking at all that and I'm going to give you some information. And it's up to you to receive it. Now, let's say I'm a great student. I got a 3.3 or 3.5. I'm around the 510, which is above the 7th percentile rank of the MCAT, which is around 71. I'm very reasonable. Do you know if I transmit my application, if I time it such that it comes in at the end of September, October, or November, I got a great chance to get interviewed. If I've done all those other things I've just said, even though my credentials now are kind of Compared to highly competitive, I'm solid. I'm in the middle of the road. Three, five, three, 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 five. You know, an MCAT of about five, twelve or so, right around there, right? Or less between a 507, 510, you'll be above the 71st percentile rank. But then you gotta know where you're applying. Did I map out all my experiences again? You see how customized it gets? We gotta look at that carefully because the timing can change depending on where you're applying and depending on what your credentials are, right? So if I've had to change something, right? I haven't applied anywhere about to change. I don't really want to apply anywhere until I know what my MCAT score is. Because that is one of the factors we have to realistically deal with. So I should not be applying somewhere or transmitting my MCAT application until I actually have an MCAT score. Why does that also make sense? Because when your application comes into me, well, this is wonderful. I got a great GPA. Um, where's the MCAT? No MCAT. Oh, hold. And they may never come back to you. It depends on the school. They may never come back to you. Why? Georgetown University got the most application of any medical school for the last two years running. This past year, we got about 14,000 applications. Of those 14,000 applications, we used to interview up to about 1,500 people, which is more than um, maybe than two other medical schools. Most medical schools interview about five to 700. I think we're down to about 900 or 1,000 many of you, and that's to actually see the class of 200 people. Okay? So out of 14,000, let's be nice and say that half of them are highly competitive. That's like 7,000 applications. And let's say those 7,000 all have great MCATs and great science grade point average. What makes them different now? It's how they frame their experiences. The academics were just a way to get through a gate. And we have to be honest about that. We have to know that you have the skill sets to handle the rigor of medical education. So there's a gate. So when we're advising students, we just don't do cookie cutter and say, well, your scores aren't good, so I guess you can't go. We help students understand how to layer their courses. So the courses show rigor. Did I get a 4.0 just doing one science course per semester? Or was it two or three courses? Can I tier it where there's a balance so I'm not overwhelmed to pull out of the boat? Absolutely. 
That shows the medical school I can do multiple sciences. Why? You're doing seven science courses as a first year medical student. Seven per semester. Seven. Got to be able to show that. But then when I'm on the other side and I say I want to help people, well, how have I really helped people? What's the depth of that experience, et cetera? So all those factors go into when that application comes in early, I could have great academics, but my experiences look great, but they weren't framed the right way. So many applicants, I don't think David's a good fit. I go over here. Think about it now. Georgetown is only seating a class of 200. We're going to interview about 1,000. What's wrong with the other 800? Nothing. It's fit. And are you telling me out of the 14,000, and I was generous and said 7,000, let's just say 7,000 were good, what's wrong with the other 6,000? A little something here, a little something there. That's what makes it daunting. That's why Mr. Burke is saying if we can get to everyone in the freshman year, we can help you build that slowly, intentionally, and effectively with the right information at the right time, so you're not just trying to say, oh, I got to get it in because I heard that's important. Because I heard if you get it in early, you get an interview. But you actually get knowledge. You get knowledge about, well, tell me which schools you want to apply to and why. And then we have a compilation of medical schools where we can frame your information, especially your personal statement and others. You're not everything to everybody, but there's going to be a secondary application that can have further framing. But I can give elements in my AMCAS to groups of medical schools that kind of have the same philosophy. Oh, we see us here. Let's go now to the secondary. But I got to get through the academic gate first. You see how everything kind of plays together? So your question in terms of now changing of the MCAT date and will that impact your actual potential for interview? Remember, I'm an optimist. The way I look at it is like, well, first of all, you're not going to be a one school person. I love to have you at Georgetown. I love to have the privilege of working with you at Georgetown. But Georgetown would have the privilege of having you. And so are the, at least 25 other medical schools. So we need to focus on at least 25 schools based on your goals and philosophy and how they map up with the school's goals and philosophy. We're gonna rank order those schools and we're gonna look at your competitiveness relative to those schools, not just from academics, but also with respect to your experiences. And based on that, we can then look at timelines where applications can be rolled out. And it may turn out you're 25, yeah, maybe two of them, it's good to get it in by September. But the other ones, October and November is just fine. That's customized. Cookie Cutter is forcing students to make inappropriate decisions. And Mr. Burke can attest this. I need to go, I need to go. I'm going to take the MCAT now. I know I'm not ready, but I got to take it. Because someone said if I take it, I don't do well, I can take it again. Bad advice. Bad advice. Each time you take the MCAT, it makes you relatively less competitive. Because it's assumed that when you take it the next time, if you do better, it's practice effect. And then if David Taylor took it two times and I got the 512, but you took it once and you got a 512, human nature says, well, you, got, you did it once, so maybe you're smarter than Dave. Now, I don't want to be in my soapbox about MCAT validity and all that. But again, I have to deal with that reality. So we want to advise you, no, if you're not ready to take the MCAT, we have to move the date. If something happens, circumstances, as we said, no problem. We move the date. And then we help you understand, honestly, does that really impact? So in your case, as it relates to Georgetown, specifically, the answer is no. It's not going to impact that. It's not going to impact it. But I want to give you that full context so you understand that some of these myths about getting in early, getting in early is relative. Because if I'm a solid student with a 3.3 or a 3.5, and I know it's competitive, and they're talking about 4.0, and they're talking about a 5.16 or a 5.19 to MCAT, I got a 3.335, and I got a 5.07, I'm telling you, if I was working with you, I feel confident. I feel confident. If you follow the advising, and we have the other things packaged, and you have excellent professionalism, et cetera, because I'm going to look at everything. Oh, yes, I am. If you have all that together, I am confident I can have you admitted to a U.S. medical school. Because I know the foreign medical school context too, separate discussion with someone asked. I'm confident. The question is, do you want to be a doctor or do you want to, I got to go to the David Taylor School of Medicine? 
because maybe I don't have the credentials for the David Taylor School of Medicine. And why is it that schools seem to have different credentials? Another conversation if someone asks the question, because every school is going to ensure that you are a board certified physician. And again, the patient's not going to say to you, did you go to Georgetown? No. Did you go to Wright State? Did you go to East Carolina? All these great schools, Mama Laura Howard? They're not going to ask you that. They're asking you, is it going to be all right? Can, can we take care of this? And it's going to be your excellence in communication skills and non judgmental listening, your excellence in compassion and understanding, and your excellence, yes, in clinical knowledge competency and clinical skills competency, all wrapped up that's going to answer that in a caring way and say, yes, we are going to make it right for you. That's the answer. It's a little bit long winded, but I need you to hear that and understand that because the pressures on pre med students too often are get it here, get it there and mistakes are made. And we're trying to have a mix. So you're in good shape. No problem. I could have just said that, but isn't context better? It's going to, it's going to help somebody else. 